Happy New Year's Eve to all you minties out there. Join me today as I do an overview of Animal Man by Jeff Lemire Omnibus from DC Comics. So please stay tuned. Okay, now let's take a closer look at this Omnibus that came out in December. So it's Animal Man by Jeff Lemire Omnibus. Now, this takes place during the New 52. It is about two and a half years worth of Jeff Lemire's storytelling. I'll talk about what the contents are in a minute. But what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about uh, Buddy. That is the character right there, Buddy Baker of Animal Man. Now, there was an omnibus released by Grant Morrison. I think this is probably world renowned as one of the best works by Grant Morrison. Uh, this, however, is not a direct follow up to that. This is during the New 52 universe when they revamped um, all the history of the DC, well, for the most part, most of the history of the DC universe. Uh, Buddy was amongst those, as well as his family. Now, before that, he was known as the everyman in the DC universe. But Jeff Lemire is about to change things. Uh, the reason I wanted to point out that book is because there's a lot of comics in between that and this. There was a follow-up. That was an ongoing series, and sadly, the rest of it hasn't been collected in omnibus format. It has been collected in trade paperback format. But let's talk about this book. The book retails for $99.99. .99. It is 816 pages. So let's look at it under the dust jacket. So you have this image of Buddy right here. Is he bleeding? Are those veins? Are those tree roots? What's going on? Got to read the story. Okay, so let's open this up. Nice image there. Most of this stuff, by the way, is drawn by Steve Pugh. Pug, oh my gosh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's been around forever. Uh, Travel Foreman and Rafael Albuquerque, Timothy Green. But yes, all of this is written by Jeff Lemire. And Scott Snyder does have some stuff in here. Let's do something really quick. Let's look at some of these names, like Jeb Woodard, the Collected Editions Editor, Group Editor, Alex Geller, Steve Cook, Luis Prandi, and Christy Sawyer. Um, the people that were putting this book together. I know some of you in the comments asked me to start doing that for DC Comics, so there you go. Uh, here is your table of contents. A nice introduction by the man himself, Jeff Lemire. I have no idea how he has time to do any of that, considering the fact that he is writing a book just about every day. And here we kick off the story of Buddy. That is his wife, Ellen. That is, these are his kids. There's Maxine. And where's Cliff? There's Cliff, his son. Uh, and that is it. Animal Man has the powers of animals. That's all I will say about his powers. Damn, was this a good book, by the way. This was such a great run. It's creepy. It's got horror elements. You know, you hear of people talk about Booster Gold, uh, Martian Manhunter, uh, the Spectre, all these uh, kind of... I don't even want to call them second tier characters because they aren't second tier characters to some. But nobody really talks about Buddy anymore. Nobody really talks about Animal Man. Um, not not as much as they used to. Not like I remember when Grant Morrison's run was coming out. Even uh, Jamie Delano's run. You know, everybody was talking about how great and how real it was because the way he was written, he was written like an everyday Joe, and like you know, it could be anybody. And I think that's why he became the everyman of the DC universe. Man, there are some creepy images in here. Now, what Jeff Lemire was able to do though, was make him stand out. Like during this first arc, and just, I'm not gonna review the book, but during this first arc, he is going through like a midlife crisis. Um, he he is going through different jobs. He is, His powers are changing, kind of like him. They can't stay, he can't control them. Uh, he notices his daughter, Maxine, is a lot more like him. Uh, and Ellen is trying to hold it. So this is about, like, Ellen, too, and the kids. That's why I keep mentioning them. It's not just about Animal Man here. Let's go through the middle here. Um, it's more about family and then their fight against evil. That's why this book is so good. And that's what's important, family. It's really interesting to see him take, a, like, his one weakness right like the the fact that he's just an average guy with that happens to have these powers and almost turn it into a narrative there is a crossover here with uh scott snyder swamp thing as i said scott snyder did do some of this uh so let's talk a little bit about what the contents are so this collects animal man 0 through 29 animal man the two annuals one and two of course and then swamp thing 12 and 17. 
Um, so that's what the contents are. But let's talk a little bit about the artwork. Then we'll talk about the binding and the extras in the back. The artwork by Travel Foreman towards the beginning reminds me a lot of Jay Lee. Like, that is some creepy imagery right there. Um, it's not as defined as Jay Lee, but it works. Like, there's some simplistic backgrounds. And then there's just so much detail on other things like tree leaves and um, yeah DNA structures. They just it's really interesting to see him draw like creatures that are right out of nightmares and then just have like plain backgrounds. I think one of the best ways I can describe it uh, for those people that have read it is I'm not sure if y'all have read the scary stories to tell in the dark trilogy. But that's what a lot of his artwork reminds me of. Travel Foreman's artwork. Damn, that is write down creepy. So I have like mixed feelings about him. Uh, now Stephen Pugh on the other hand, Pug, ugh, sorry. Uh, his art, I mean, the dude was kicking ass all the way in the 80s and 90s. So he's been around forever. So for the most part, I really enjoy the artwork because it fits the tone of the book. It fits that narrative. So family, horror, adventure, that's what this book brings you. Let's look at the extras and talk about this binding. Okay, so here are the extras. You have combined covers of Animal Man 12 and Swamp Thing 12. The combined covers of Animal Man 17 and Swamp Thing 17. Did I say Animal Man? What the hell's wrong with me? And then the making of Animal Man. These are character sketches and character designs. By Most of this is all travel, uh, travel foreman. Um, Let's see. Here's some unused colors for the dream sequences. And this is the art of Steve Pugh. There's the Rock Queen design, Franken Lantern. There are some guest stars in here, as you probably saw John Constantine, Swamp Thing, but there are other guest stars that I will leave as a surprise. There's Jay Lee, who I mentioned. Him reminded me a lot of his artwork. Travel Foreman reminded me a lot of his artwork. That looks like a Lemire character right there. And internal pages, the rough cuts, the layouts of the covers. Here's some stuff by Rafael Albuquerque. And then where you can find the creators here. Now let's look at this binding. So as you could probably tell, it is sewn binding, uh, but it's got the same issue that the Flash Omnibus had that I showcased a couple days ago. It's got uh, this glue here that weighs it down, and there's your eye. It does look better, and you could probably tell it was a little bit better than that Flash book, and definitely better than the Scott Snyder Omnibus. Uh, but Again, it is weighed down by that glue, so you're gonna have to hold down the book, and there is some gutter loss. Not a lot, but some. And luckily, there's not that many splash pages towards the beginning, but there are some. Damn, that is a cool dream sequence. But I do want to make you aware of that. I have stretched the spine out. I've done the trick with the ruler. Uh, it helps a little bit, but as you can probably tell, um, still not enough. So, I mean, it's not terrible, but I do want to point that out. And the paper quality is the same as that Flash and Lucifer Omnibus, by the way, if you're, in case you're wondering. It's thick. It's, it's not thin at all. Like, you can't really see what's going on on the other page, even... You know, of course you will if you hold it up to the light. And remember, you can purchase the book from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Cheap Graphic Novels Black Friday sale is continuing all through December, so there's still time to save up to 95% off thousands of books. Additional books will be added throughout the month, so be sure to check back often and stay tuned to CGN on social media to be the first to know when the new books have been added to the sale. 
Cheap graphic novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you picked it up, if you pre-ordered it, if you went ahead and bought it, if you're going in blind, if you've never ever have read a single Animal Man story. If you love Grant Morrison's run and uh, Jamie Delano's run, and you want to see what else they've done, if you want to see what they've done in the New 52 universe, revamping the character and his family. And for the love of God, will somebody in the comments please tell me how to pronounce Steve Pugh, Pugs, last name. Ugh, I feel so horrible. Anyway, uh, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, join us on our Patreon if you can do so. All of that information is in the description down below. We are also on Redbubble. And tune in later today for a live episode where the astonishing Amanda returns to do a most anticipated comic book movies and TV shows of 2020 with myself. So, remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.